Welcome to the Cinema 4D Connection Quick Start Video. Before we continue, please watch the HCR Live Studio Quick Start Video first. It teaches the key concepts of HCR Live Studio that you need to understand first. A link to that video is in the description. Make sure you have installed both the main HCR Live Studio application and the HCR Live Studio connection for Cinema 4D. Okay, without further ado, let's learn how to use HDR Live Studio connected to Cinema 4D. If you want to follow along, you can download this demo scene set up for your renderer. Link is in the description. In this video, I'll be using Redshift. Start Cinema 4D. Load your Cinema 4D project. I'm loading the Watch Demo model. Before lighting with HDR Live Studio, make sure you have a camera set up and that you're happy with the composition. If you're using your own Cinema 4D project, you probably already had some kind of lighting set up during the look development of your shaders. So before we start lighting with HDR Live Studio, either hide or delete that lighting. Let's open the HDR Live Studio connection panel. Go to Menu, Extensions, then HDR Live Studio. Drag the HDR Live Studio panel to dock it in the Cinema 4D interface. Use the Set Renderer drop-down to set your renderer for this project. I'm using Redshift, so we'll choose Redshift. Press Create New Project to create a new HDR Live Studio lighting project that is set up for the Set Renderer. If we look in the Objects panel, we can see the HCR Light Studio Redshift project has been created and it contains an environment light for Redshift. This new project is now listed as the active project in the connection panel. Now let's start HCR Light Studio connected to Cinema 4D. Make sure any other sessions of HCR Light Studio are closed before we progress. Press Start and HCR Light Studio starts connected to Cinema 4D. If a firewall permission panel pops up, give permission for the HDR Live Studio connection to use TCP IP. This is how HDR Live Studio communicates with Cinema 4D. Okay, in HDR Live Studio, the default lighting is a HDR gradient. Let's go back to Cinema 4D. On the dome light, look at the HDR IMAP. We can see that HDR Live Studio has shared its HDR IMAP with Cinema 4D. This map updates every time the lighting changes. To keep updates fast, this is a low resolution image and perfectly good enough during the lighting design process. But at the end, we will render final high resolution lighting textures. Let's look at the HDR Live Studio interface. The default interface layout with Cinema 4D looks like this. We now have an additional render view here. Considering this additional render view is optional and is not compatible with all renderers, I will close it for now and show you how to use it later. So let's change our interface layout. Go to Menu, Window, Layout, Load, Default, Standalone. This is the interface we are all familiar with from the HDR Light Studio Quick Start video. So most professional 3D artists use two displays and this works best for HDR Light Studio. You can place Cinema 4D on one display and HDR Light Studio on the other. However, there are many possible interface layouts you can configure for two or one display. You can find out more about different interface layouts in the link in the description. Now we are going to export the Cinema 4D scene into HDR Light Studio. In the HDR Light Studio Quick Start video, we pressed play and chose the Watch Demo model. However, now HDR Light Studio is connected to our Cinema 4D project. If we press play, the Import Scene Geometry panel pops up. Leave the settings at the default and just press Import. The whole Cinema 4D scene is exported as a temporary Alembic file and loaded into the render view. If we wanted to export just some of the Cinema 4D scene, we can from the HCR Live Studio connection panel. In fact, it would be nice to export this watch model without the glass geometry covering the face, so we can see the hand and numbers in HDR Live Studio. Select all watch parts, excluding the glass. Make sure the camera is selected too. Go to Scene Export tab, 
In the Export options, select Current Selection only. Press the Export scene into HDR Live Studio button and going back to HDR Live Studio, you can see only the selected parts of the scene have been exported. We can see the face and hands of the watch. I'll just tweak the render view settings to get the ratio of the image correct. And we'll change the shader to look more like gold. OK, let's make our first light. By default, light paint is set to reflection in this view. Drag and drop a preset light onto the 3D model where you want it reflecting. We will click and drag to adjust the light position. Now, let's start interactive rendering in Cinema 4D so we can see the lighting interact with the final shaders. The interactive render in Cinema 4D uses the current lighting in HDR Light Studio. As we change the lighting in HDR Light Studio, the interactive render in Cinema 4D updates too. Let's close this interactive render view for now. You can also position your lights using our light paint feature directly in the Cinema 4D viewport. At the bottom of the HDR Light Studio connection panel, let's choose the light paint reflection mode. Click on the model in the Cinema 4D viewport where you want to see the light reflected. The light has moved in HDR Light Studio. Using light paint in the Cinema 4D viewport is ideal for renderers that support viewport rendering, like Redshift. So let's turn on Redshift Viewport Interactive Rendering. Now we can click on the model in the rendered viewport to position the light and see the result instantly. If you're looking for a workflow that works well on lower specification computers, then using light paint on the Cinema 4D viewport can be a good solution, as the model does not need to be exported and rendered in HDR Light Studio at all. However, light paint positions can be slow to calculate in Cinema 4D on very large scenes, whereas HDR Light Studio's own render view is always super fast even with huge scenes. Let's stop the viewport interactive rendering for now and go back to HDR Light Studio. Now let's look at area lights. So far, all the lighting is on the HDR IMAP. With the light selected, enable the area light checkbox. The light is instantly removed from the HDR IMAP and built as a 3D area light inside HDR Light Studio and Cinema 4D. Drag the Smart Dolly slider to a smaller value to bring the light into view. Let's go back to Cinema 4D to see what's changed. We can see our area light in the same place in the Cinema 4D viewport. It appears in the Objects panel inside the HDR Light Studio project. And we can see that the HDR Light Studio connection has taken control of the area light's texture, just like it controls the HDR IMAP. Let's turn on Viewport Interactive Rendering to see the lighting effect of the area light. Area lights are positioned using Light Paint too, so let's click and drag on HDR Light Studio's render view to move the light. Once the mouse is released, the light position updates in Cinema 4D. Or we can click on the Cinema 4D viewport too using the Light Paint tools. In Xenon Drop 3, this new spread slider has been added to control area light spread. At the time of release, this is compatible with Arnold, Redshift, V-Ray and Octane. If that's not your renderer, you can now skip to rendering your lighting section at 13 minutes and 17 seconds. For those of you still here, let me show you how area light spread works. I'm going to move this light to light the watch face. I'm going to make it smaller and change its appearance to be soft and round. I'll turn off camera visibility and I will solo this light to see only its effect. Okay, we can see this small soft round light is illuminating the whole watch face because light is emitting in all directions from the surface of the area light. I will now reduce the spread slider and the light will become more focused. You can see on the watch face it produces a soft spotlight effect now, useful for lighting small details. Now you have seen this, we can unsolo this light. At the beginning of the video, 
we saw an additional render view in the default interface layout for Cinema 4D. Now's a good time to talk about it for those of you using Redshift, Octane, or Arnold. If that's not your renderer, you can now skip to rendering your lighting section at 13 minutes and 17 seconds. For those of you still here, let's reset the HCR Light Studio interface to its default Cinema 4D layout by going to Menu, Window, Layout, Load, Default, Cinema 4D. The purpose of this render view is to display the interactive render from either Redshift, Arnold or Octane inside the HCR Live Studio interface. Using this additional render view is ideal when using a computer with one display, as everything you need to light this shot can be viewed inside HDR Live Studio. However, streaming a render image into this view does use more computer resources, but for simpler scenes that render quite fast, this view works really well. Before we tell Cinema 4D to start the interactive render and stream these images into HCR Live Studio, we need to check the render resolution is set to a sensible resolution. We suggest a maximum of 1000 by 1000 pixels. Higher resolution interactive renders in this context are a huge waste of resources and will slow down the lighting process. In Cinema 4D, go to Edit Render Settings to check this. Great! This resolution of 720x720 720 is fine. Make sure to stop any existing interactive render sessions running in Cinema 4D too. Let's go back to HDR Light Studio and press play in the additional render view. Because I am using Redshift, a new Redshift render view panel opens and starts streaming its image into the HDR Light Studio interface too. Please note, for Octane users, a new live viewer window will open with the message external rendering and stream its image into HCR Live Studio. And for Arnold, a hidden render session will start and stream its image. When your interactive render is streaming into HCR Live Studio, be sure not to try and start another interactive render session. This will mess things up. Okay, with the interactive render now inside HDR Live Studio, you can now drag and drop lights onto this render view and use light paint to position lights here too, just like with HDR Live Studio's internal renderer. If this view is too slow, then produce test renders with it from time to time using the pause and play buttons at the bottom of the panel. But if you're happy with the speed, why not close HDR Light Studio's render view and adjust your interface to focus on the shot you are lighting? As I said before, using this view is very much optional, but for users with a single display working on simple scenes that render fast, this view works really well. However, if you've got two displays, it makes less sense to use this render view. So far, HDR Light Studio has been sharing low resolution temporary textures with Cinema 4D. If we were to stop the HDR Light Studio connection right now, those temporary files would be deleted and your Cinema 4D scene would look like this. We don't want to use low resolution pixelated images for the final lighting, so we need to produce high resolution HDR textures on disk now that are referenced by the Cinema 4D scene. Press the HDR button in the toolbar. This opens the production render panel. We can now adjust our production render settings. Let's set the HDR IMAPS resolution to 3000 by 1500 pixels and area lights to 1500 pixels. Then press the browse button, choose a file location, I'll save it on my desktop, and give the lighting files a name. Press render. The final lighting textures are generated. This can take some time for very high resolutions. The HCR Light Studio connection then updates Cinema 4D to use the new high resolution textures on our disk. Let's go back to Cinema 4D and look at the dome light. We can see it's using our final HDR IMAP file. And if we look at our area lights, we can see they have the same file name with their ID number at the end. 
Be aware, if we now make any changes to the lighting in HCR Live Studio, we would go back to using the latest low resolution temporary textures. So it's important to now stop the HCR Live Studio connection. HDR Live Studio now closes and leaves your Cinema 4D scene with an awesome lighting setup. So you are ready to render your final image from Cinema 4D. HDR Live Studio has created standard lights. This scene can be rendered anywhere, even on computers without HDR Live Studio licenses. The current state of the HDR Live Studio project is embedded in the Cinema 4D project. We should now save our Cinema 4D scene so it stores the lighting design associated with the lighting textures. We may need to edit the lighting in the future. If you want to edit the lighting, simply press start and HDR Live Studio will open and load the lighting project as it is embedded in the Cinema 4D scene. Just remember to render out the high-res textures again once you have finished editing the lighting. Okay, so that's the end of the Cinema 4D Connection Quick Start Guide. Thank you for watching. To learn more, be sure to check out our short tips videos on our YouTube channel. And if you have any problems with the workflow, just get in touch with support at lightmap.co.uk.